Hey everybody, <clears throat> Johnny here with my boy Q. Good morning, good morning. What's up, man? Good morning, happy so, to be here. <clears throat> no doubt, happy new year, man. Thank you, thank you, God bless. Yo, so we're here today just talking about ambitions and goals and how um, the everyday life can kind of get in the way. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So Q, let, uh, lead us on, let me know, like, you know, put us on to who you are and what's going on. I like, my name is Quasi, everybody calls me Q, some people call me Coach Q. Um... It's, that's a huge, huge subject that you're, you're bringing up, ambition, and life, and everything, you know. Life hits you so hard, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes yeah. that you, 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 don't, you don't take a second to, like, where did this start? Yeah. You know, as a kid, you know, you hear kids say, I want to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I want to be a doctor. Sure. I want to be a teacher. Yeah. Nobody says, I want to be a crackhead. <laughs> no, Nobody no. sees them, right? <clears throat> no doubt, yeah, yeah. Nobody says, I want to be a a laborer right but they're there um i myself i'm a i'm a retail arts manager for a chain store um as a kid i've, I've never wanted to be what i am right now in terms of occupation sure. um as a young man i wanted to be what everybody else wanted to be i wanted to be a lawyer mm -hmm. i went i went to school i um took up business law. I always had a fascination with cars. I said, um, I'm going to go to mechanic school. Went to automotive school. I see. That's funny you say. I went to automotive high school in okay. Brooklyn. Okay. Very so we, nice. had, we had the same kind of see, similar thing. Exactly. I, would, I, would, I would go in the streets with my brother-in-law. We would actually take, take cars apart in the yes. street. Yes. You know, and, yes. Um, yes. and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, that's how we're so connected like that. So I did that for a little bit. But I had a uh, I've always been passionate about boxing. Okay. So, I um, when I was a kid, you know, you my dad took me to do karate, and I wanted to do boxing. My mom said no. <laughs> my dad put me in judo. I wanted to do boxing. My, my mom said no. <laughs> so when I got I to a certain it. when I got to a certain age, I said, "Mom, I'm going to box. I'm going." And I was old enough that you know at that point she couldn't say no, and I right. And I went. Um, I thought I'd, I'd, at one point, I thought I'd become a professional boxer. Okay. That was my dream. Okay. I, um, so what happened? What happened? Why didn't you become that professional boxer? You know, it's, it's so strange because when you dream, mm -hmm. right, you can do anything. Absolutely. When you dream, you can do anything. I was a good fighter, believe it or not. I think I was what you call a gym rat. Okay. That you come to the gym and you, you get it. Right. Um, I started winning fights, winning fights. Um, I learned how to want, how to win. Okay. I never learned how to lose. Okay. That's, that's good. I never learned how to lose. And um, when I lost, it made me sit down and analyze certain things. It made me analyze my age. Right. It made me analyze the, <clears throat> the, the possibilities and the percentages of people that make it in professional boxing. And I decided at that moment to take a safe bet instead of continuing to chase dreams because I was scared to become a certain age and be a dream chaser. And people say, well, look at him. He's done nothing with his life. He's chasing a dream. And um, I look back and I says, it was a mistake. Stopping at that loss? You mean, yes. You know, so you, you feel like that loss, that loss. you could have gained more knowledge by I that loss. I could have, I could have exactly. Perpetuated yourself more with exactly, that loss. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I look back in hindsight, everything is God's plan. I understand that. Sure. But, um, we don't we don't prepare ourselves for the loss for losses in life. Right. We don't prepare ourselves for obstacles in life. Like we get we get ready for the wedding, but we don't get ready for the marriage. Like that, yeah. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, absolutely. We we you know we we it's it's and if you look at if you look at sports, most coaches are people. Or athletes that could have done better, right? 
Right. And most coaches never played the game. No, exactly. Right? Exactly. But they're good as hell. They're good as but fuck. Because right. you know why that happens? And I've analyzed this. And I've thought about it for a long time. When you have the, the capability of doing something and you don't, you spend a lot of time thinking about where you went wrong. So the regret factor. The regret factor. So how can we get people, especially minorities, right? Right. You're a black man. I'm, yes. I'm Puerto Rican. Yes. So how can we get minorities to get that regret to perpetuate you to a positive outcome? To see, use that see, negative energy as positive energy. And you know what's the funny part? It's so simple, but it's a forgotten art. Talking to the ones that come after you. Mm -hmm. Fatherhood to son. Fatherhood to son, coach to fighter. It, it used to be, it used to be, they have a saying, it takes a village mm -hmm. to raise a child. Absolutely. Right? Where when we, we were younger, we can get advice from dad. Mm -hmm. We can get advice from the uncle. Yeah. We can get advice from the neighbor. Yeah. From grandma, from grandpa. Yeah. Right? Right, right. And we would learn from their experiences. And believe it or not, passing down the mistakes that you learned. It, when you help the person coming after you, it helps you. Absolutely. It helps you. Um, we should never, we should never give up on our dreams. If we have, if we, if we have people come behind us, we should, we should say, you could do it. You know, we could do it. And I think we as, since you brought it up, we as minorities have been trained to say, we cannot do this. We Absolutely. cannot do this. Because I know, growing up in Brooklyn, I'm going to talk about projects, and I can see the Twin Towers from my, I live on the 11th floor. Yes, sir. So I can see the Twin Towers from, from the, through the haze. Yes, sir. But you, I was always told you, don't go over there. That's not yes, you. Don't that's go to Manhattan. You. That's not don't you. Go to exactly. Stay in the block. Exactly. Let's do block shit. Exactly. Let's be around. Let's be around. Let's do stick up kid shit. And that's what it that's is. That's it. Because, you know, I feel like had I had, had I had a different support system, mm -hmm. someone to tell me no, we got to get up. We got to go. You know, I have a son. He played ice hockey in Brooklyn. Okay. And he, he played in the league. He was the only, he was the only black kid in the league. There were other mixed kids. Sure. You know, but he was the only black kid in the league. And how he came about playing ice hockey was, 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 was peculiar because one day he said to me, he said, Dad, what's your favorite sport? And I looked at him like, Son, come on now. Daddy coaches boxing. boxing. That's his favorite yeah, sport, right. right? I said, boxing. And he said, and I said to him, what's your favorite sport? And he said, ice hockey. I said, ice hockey? Where that shit came from? <laughs> Where this come from? Right. Right. Like, dude, we, live on, we live on Flatbush. <laughs> right. You know, he has never been on the ice. and never think. He saw it on TV. He watches the winter sports. He plays the video games. He fell in love with it. He liked it. So I said to him, but I had a, I had, my, my, my mindset was different okay. as an adult. I said to him, that's what you like? He said, yeah. I said, okay. The next Saturday morning I woke up, I took him to the, to the ice rink. Okay. Right? Fantastic. We went to the ice rink. Good shit. And, you know, he saw the kids practicing. I said, this is what you want to do? He said, yeah. I said, I brought him some ice time. And and, and, I, and I'll be honest, the whole family went. It was an event. It was an event. <laughs> right. right? Yeah, yeah. I had a, a younger son who was probably like four years old. My lady went. We all got skates. We went to skates. That's what's up. My first son, he, was a, he went around by himself, walked around. My lady, she went a little further than me. I went about four feet. <laughs> My little man, he fell on the ice and he skated, and I and I couldn't get him. And I asked a young lady skating by, I said, "Excuse me, can you slide my son over? <laughs> I I just can't get him, you know." Right. But by the second round or the third round around, my son had got the the gist of it. So he, he got that 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 he kind of rhythm going. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I said, "We're gonna come back again." And God works in mysterious ways. I worked at a, a dealership at the time, and one of my clients came in and he says, "How's you doing? How you doing?" He said, "Are you still coaching boxing?" And I said, "Yes." He said, "You know, my dad was a boxer." I said, "I never knew that." He said, "Yeah, but I never liked it. I like hockey." 
I said, oh, my son likes hockey. And he said, I coach hockey. I said, really? I said, my son wants to play. He told me, I want you to go to this place at this time, speak to this person, and tell them that I sent you. So, the next weekend, I packed up my the whole family, we went to the, 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 the arena, saw that person at that time in the place, and she said, you know, because we were what we are. Yeah. She said, oh, we do, you know, the, 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 the classes are full. Everything is full. You can fill us out. And you could come back next season. I said, okay. I says, well, Adam Maloney, Adam Maloney who the person the friend was, he says, he sent me, and he told me that I should see you. She says, you know Adam? And I said, yeah, he's a friend of mine. She says, you know what? We'll fit him in. Wow. They, they put him in, and they had him on walkers. They were skating with walkers. Sure. The, the, the first couple of weeks, my son started excelling and excelling. And they took him out of the, the beginner's class. And they put him in the intermediate class. And from the intermediate class, I took him out of that class and put him on a team. That's awesome. Within less than a year, he was one of the fastest kids on the team. That's great. And everybody around me was like, why you put your son in hockey? Black people don't play hockey. I said, no, my, my son plays hockey. Yeah. My son's a hockey player. And you know, I learned something from, you got to learn from everything. Absolutely. My dad always says, you got to seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Right. Right? So I learned something from Obama when he was running for president. I realized he never spoke about being a black president. Mm -hmm. Never spoke about being a black candidate. And I made that rule about my son. I never had him in his mind thinking that he was a black hockey player. I said, sir, hockey player. Right. You got to be the best hockey player, you know. And that's something we as minorities, black, Puerto Rican, whichever minority you are, right, you have to say, I'm not a black student. I'm not a black worker. I'm not a black manager. I am equal. You're Q. I'm Q. You're just Q. I'm just Q. That's it. You understand? So that's very important when you when you when you when you when you you go in terms of goals. Right. Don't give yourself a limit. Don't give yourself a title. You gotta you gotta talk it into existence. You gotta pray it into existence. Right? And you gotta take time to 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 teach the ones that come behind us. The only way, the only way we as a people are gonna reach a certain level is if we start changing what's around us. Right. right. And then you change one extra. And that's important, you know. But um again, go we talk we started off with the goals and, yeah. and, and how we think. You know, it's very easy, it's very easy to have an excuse as to I gotta do I gotta go to work. Yeah. I gotta do this. Yeah. I gotta take the kids. I gotta so, so how do you, what are you doing now? You know, you have, you have this passion. Yes. Right? You're older, just like yes. I am. Yes. Right? We're rediscovering that, yo, no, no time is valuable because yes. second part of our, second half of our phase yes. of our life, right? Yes. And we're doing this podcast right yes. now. This is what my passion has become. Yes. I've always been the developer yes. And, yes. and coaching people and stuff yes. like that, but I never did nothing with it. I just okay. decided to. To stay in corporate America and do, yes. and do the basic job because yes. that's what I was told, self-taught. And I was like, no, I got to take shit in my own hands now. So yes. what are you doing to take boxing in your own hands to really make okay. it to okay. what you want now? Now, I am I am currently in the process of setting up a non-for-profit organization, okay. which we have already we already done the first step of doing that. The name of the organization is going to be Village 786. Okay. And, and the, the name... May sound a little strange, but um Yeah, give us some history on the name. I, I the name the, name I came with the name is very simple. Um my dad and my grandma, they always have sayings. One of the sayings I said, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And if we don't and if we don't start doing that, we're gonna lose our children. Right? Especially with everybody working, hustling the hustle and bustle of today's life. So I wanted I wanted the, the, the mindset of the village, we're gonna take care of the youth. We're gonna take care of the future, cause cause you could invest in stocks, you could invest in 
in, in real estate. You don't invest in the, in the kids. Right. We're done. Um, and seven and six is, a, is, is something that, that, that um, religions use in the past, which it's a, it's a code for in the name of God. Okay. So it's basically that's what's up. That's that's really cool combo. You right know, there. God's village. Right, right, right. right God's yeah. village, and we yeah. are, and and it takes a village, and we want to be the village. And what I'm what I what I'm doing is, I'm having I'm having a boxing program. Okay. Where if you know, you it's gonna be a boxing gym. You want to be a world champion? You come there. You want to defend yourself? You come there. You want to get in shape? You come there. It's gonna have an after school program. We're we're gonna have mentoring. Um and in, in, in the past when I, I coached boxing in Brooklyn, New York, I had simple rules. And the rule was I would train you even for free. You couldn't be in a gang. If you're aged to go to school, you had to go to school. Right. You had to bring me your report card, every report card. And the the, the, the reason behind it was if you don't go to school, you're not gonna learn. The first part is get to school. Sure. The second part is pay attention in class. Yeah. If there's something you don't understand, we can get you help. But if you don't get to class, we can't get you there. So, um, so let, me, let me ask you this. I love the nonprofit fact. Mm -hmm. I really do. But how does how does Q make money off of that? No, no. This. How this, do you support your family? Like, how do this you is, this, how this you is, get out of what you're doing now? Yes. To make that full time. Well, this is this is this is this is how how it works. Um, it is not for profit. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that it's going to be free for everyone. Sure. If you're of a working age and you want to come to the gym, you're going to pay to come to the gym. Sure. If you want, if you want, um, personal training, and you're not a, a student, you're going to pay for that. Absolutely. Um, if you, we, 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 we have, we do have a, a link and base with professional promoters. A manager thing, so and we will have a professional program for professional fighters to come and train at the gym. Also, right, right. Um, we're in Atlanta. Just let people know. So we are, we are. In me, Atlanta. me, me, and Q from Brooklyn. Yes, we met by circumstance. But circumstance, and um, we're here in Atlanta, which is crazy. And Q is is a great person. Like I see him work all the time, and you know he's 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 a person that, that has a lot of vigor and 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 self value and self worth and um. You see it, but then I also see the side that you don't want to be here. You know what it is? I want to live. No doubt. I, I get that. But you want to be I don't, I don't want to exist. You don't want to be here. Like, no. Not, not, no, you know not what it is? Not in this place still. You no, know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to. You know what it is? You want to do what you want to do. When, when you, you, wanna, you yeah. coach boxing. When I coach boxing, I feel alive. Right, right. When I, when I, when I, when I, when I punch a clock and I do my job, I take my job seriously, but it's, there's, no, there's not passion. No, it's it's, not, it's just to make it easy. It's to pay, it's, it's, it's pay the bills, bills. And, and that's that's some man shit there. Right well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know, some people have said it for a long time. When you do something you love, you don't work a day. Absolutely. You don't work a day. Yeah. You know, um, is that, I could fucking sit and talk to people all day. All day. So if I can find a way to make money all off day. of it, that'd be great. Oh, man, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, I'm, you know, and it's so funny because it's so funny because you know you get up and you do something. It's okay. I pay this bill. I pay this bill. I pay this bill. But it's, you know, even when you're in environment, when you're in a, when you're in an environment of something that's that feels stagnant, yeah, that feels stagnant, that there's no movement, there's no. It's just it's a fucking disease. It's, it's not good. It makes you feel sick. It's not good. And and and, and I tell you this: if you're an ambitious person and you're around people that's not an ambitious person, it's going to make you disgusted. Absolutely. If you're a thinker. If you're a thinker, because you you're a smart person, let's talk nah. about this for a second. No, no, you are a smart person. Nah, nah. Then, if you are a thinker and you think outside the box and you have conversations with people that don't think outside the box or not thinkers, and I'm not throwing so there, but I'm not thinking, I'm talking facts. It's, it's you know, the, as a kid, we, we, you learn to read. Mm -hmm. You learn to read as a kid, and people read and they say, okay, how good is this person of a reader? And they pick up a book and they read the book and they pronounce all the words correct. And then you say, okay, what does that mean? They can't fucking tell you. Yeah. Because you have to read and comprehend. Right, right. Not read, pronunciate. You know, a couple of years ago, they were making jokes about Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. 
right? It was a hot 97, was yeah. it not? Yeah. They made jokes about his reading, and his pronunciation, right? But you got to think about this. Here's a guy that makes contracts that makes him $300 million, <laughs> right. right? So I think he understands. <laughs> he he comprehends some he shit. He comprehends something. <laughs> right, right. right. You understand? He knows numbers. These people people <laughs> making twenty and $30,000 a year laughing at somebody that, wakes up when he wants to wake up and works when he wants to work and retired at 30 something. See, but I think what people misunderstand is that when you have a passion, yeah. when you have something that you just love to do, yeah. and like you said earlier, like, you know, it doesn't feel like it's work, No, but you got to put the fucking work in. But you got to put the work in. You know, and it's going to be no it's different from be. your job. Now no. you're working 10, 12 hours a day. Yes. You can do the same thing for that as well. Yes. And to have that stigma of entrepreneurship, I think people have, the wrong idea of entrepreneurship. Excuse me. He did. I, I think people tend to look at entrepreneurship as, like you just said, he can work whenever he wants to work. He's working no. every day. No, he is. You he, know, you're he, right. He's you're hustling right. every you're fucking right. day. You're right. You're 100% right. Now, you, you see him partying hard because he's fucking busts his ass probably 80 hours, 90 hours a week yeah. to, make that, to make that shit happen. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know what? I, and then to I, box, you, as you know, yes. the yes. training... Yes, the you discipline might train three times a day. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? I so, don't want to. I don't want to. No, it's just a, yeah. in the in for, context for, and perspective of yeah. people. Like, if you're if you're that person who thinks that I'm be an entrepreneur, yeah. I'm going to be something yeah. so I can take time off. Yeah, you're not a fucking entrepreneur thinker. No, because no, entrepreneurs no, 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 don't no, take a fucking day off. Don't I, I, I don't want. I don't do that perception that I think he that I say he wakes. No, up no, no, yeah, yeah. Up. I mean to say that he wakes up at his time. Exactly. I don't want to say that he wakes up. When I say he wakes up, and when he was, I don't he wakes up at 10, 10 a.m. He's getting up three o'clock in the morning, right? And he's he 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 might he might go train two o'clock in the morning, right? He might he might he on Sundays he's he's doing his thing. If I you know if I gotta get up to go to work at four o'clock to punch a clock, that's somebody else's time. Yeah, I'm giving my time to somebody else. Right. But when I get up at four o'clock and I go to the gym. To train somebody that wants to be a world champion, that's me. So how so what are you doing right now? Are you are you actually training someone right now? You know, at this time, I'm training my son. Okay. I'm training my son. He's eight years old. He's been he's been he's been he's been coming to the gym since he was in the baby carrier. And while I was training, I've trained fighters that I've won as a coach, I've won every tournament in New York City as an amateur. The the the, the Olympian at 178, we lost to him by one point. Right. So I've put a lot of time in that. Um, I want to spend a little bit of time with my son. Sorry. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. And because I feel like he's sat on the bench and watched for a long time. Sure. So I spent, I spent a lot of time with him, getting his basics down and getting because I want to be a classic. Right. I want to be a classic, and his passion is, is as strong as I've ever seen like in, a, in an adult or a child. But um, with that being said, um, we're still in the process of looking for a location okay. to put the gym, and once that has, has happened, then um, then we're going to continue to have more boxes. So, let's be, let's be realistic here. How... How's, it, how's that going to affect your daily gig? At what time are you going to have to really contribute once you get the location, right? Right. What's the timeline? I guess how much time you're going to put of yourself into that gym? You still have to have your day job because the gym is not going to pay nothing up front. No. How are you going to pay the bills? What we're going to do is, what we're gonna do is I'm blessed to the position I'm in. I can make my own schedule. Okay. So I'll, I'll be coming in earlier to work, even a little earlier. Um, I'm also going to have uh, another coach at the gym. Okay. That that I've already I've already come up with one or two candidates. Um, I've there's there's a a former Connecticut slash New York boxer. His name is I don't know if I have to put his name out there. It's, it's up to you. But you yeah. know, but he um he's an he's a he's in he is in the uh, the the Georgia state of Georgia now. Okay. He's already he's already started coaching. Okay. In, in in Georgia, we've had conversations. Um, about him coming on board, so it's a beautiful thing. It is. Um, Georgia, Georgia doesn't have a huge notoriety for boxing, right? But it does have a rich, a rich boxing 
um, background in that Evander Holyfield. Absolutely. Evander Holyfield is from yeah. is from Georgia. Yes, he is. He's from the beautiful state of Georgia. He's a former Olympian. He's a great world champion. Yeah. And he has just started. He has just started to to promote boxing. Right. He has started to promote boxing. So boxing in Georgia is coming. Danny Jacobs. Yeah. Former middleweight champ of the world. He's recently he's recently purchased a house in Georgia. Um. Because. You know, we, Jadon Codrington. We know that growing up, I know growing up in Brooklyn, there was a, there was a boxing gym. gym There's like probably more corner. boxing gyms than libraries. You know, There's but then a, it's gone. It's gone to shit now, right? Right. So it 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 it, it, it has gone to shit. I don't know if I could say that, but yeah. it's gone to shit because you know I think the culture has gotten watered down. There's such a haste. There's such a haste to put your product out there. It's such a haste to put your product out there that 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 you put them out there before time. Because it's funny because I know. UFC has a struggle in the, in the beginning, yeah. the heyday, because there was no regulations. People were just fighting yeah. different weight classes. Yeah. Then they put regulations on it. Yeah. It kind of took over boxing, right? As far as interest? I don't see it. I don't see it. You don't think as far as people being interested in... in no. No? No. Is that because of the way it's set up? Because boxing is very know, individualized. You, know, you have promoters if, and... Yes. It's boxing. UFC is excited. Right. And and, and you got to... I have a lot of respect for UFC. I have respect for, for any any person that 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 is a gladiator. You right. understand? Because in this day and age, boxing and UFC is the last of the gladiators. Right. You know, I, I wish to be honest with you, sometimes I wish that I was I lived in the times where they would fight in front of Caesar. Right. And 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 and, and Caesar would say, Okay, thumb up or thumb down. But the people uh, inside. But don't you think that the past couple of years US UFC has probably actually helped out boxing? By bringing attention because it's a competition where they're saying we're better than you or whatever, and then the ha- then the McGregor and Floyd fight was like, okay, now you're gonna come my ring. Right. And then we should. And like, the only thing that where Floyd did right there was really put a night a, a better spotlight on boxing now for. Well, if you if anybody who has an understanding of the combat sport, the mm-hmm. com- any combat sport, the, the the object should be to hit and not get hit. Sure. Right. The, the dynamics of boxing. The, any 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 champion or great champion or the greatest champion, yeah. right? Allegedly, defense is defense. Defense is is what's important. It's to hit, not get hit. Absolutely. Defense wins championships in any sport. Yeah. In any sport, you watch Atlanta, Atlanta, the Super Bowl. You yeah. Know, you know, if the if the defense held up, we would have had a championship. Yeah, absolutely. I don't see defense in UFC the way I see it boxing. Right. I don't see it. So, so UFC is not complete. Sure, UFC is not yet complete. It's still young. It's still, it's still a young, young sport. Yeah, but 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 until until you have defense, I can't recognize you. You understand? Above boxing, boxing's a science. Boxing's a science, right? I can I I can recommend I can recommend I can recognize Olympic wrestling before I can recognize UFC. Right. I have to. I have to. Because if you can't sit down and put a formula to something, it's a, it's a street fight. It's a street fight. Right? And like I said, I took my hat off to them because you got to be tough. Yeah. Right? But UFC fighters, they don't tuck the chin. They're not sitting on the angle. They're not turning. Right? They're trading blows. Right. They're trading blows. There's, 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 you tell me a, a UFC fighter that could be in a sport for as long as a Floyd Mayweather and, 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 and still have the functions of a Floyd Mayweather or a De La Hoya or a Bernard Hopkins. Right. You can't have it. You, it's, like, it's like a firecracker. Because I was listening to you, you just say fucking excited when you talk about boxing. It, it like, I, I can see in your fucking it, eyes right it, now. Like, it's, it, it's, it's amazing it's, to watch it. You it, know, it, 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 it's, it, it's me. Right, right. It's me, to be honest with you. You know, I, I'll tell you a story. My grandmother passed away on the 23rd. Sorry to hear that. Right? Yeah. And I had to fly to New York. Yeah. And a few of my fighters came to visit. One fighter in particular. I said, you know, let's, let's, let's go to the gym. Let's go see the never wait the gym. We got to the gym. There's basically nobody in the gym. There's like two or three people. Yeah. Like it was cold. It was Christmas time. Sure. And we were sitting there. I was talking to one of the other trainers, and he was asking me how Georgia was and how everything was. And we were talking, and, and my trainers and my fighter said, Coach, I got my, my my bag in the trunk. I says, Oh, yeah. He says, You know, 
we could train a little bit. I says, go get your bag. And we probably did an hour, an hour and a half worth of work. And for that hour and a half, I promise you, everything was right with my visit. All right. Everything was right with the world. There was no bills to get paid. There was no stress. There was no. There was no sadness. There was. There was no nothing. It's the passion. The, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Whatever, whatever your, whatever your passion is in life, you gotta go get it. Right, right. You gotta go get it. Um, you know, if you if your passion is music, mm -hmm. you gotta go get it. If your passion is acting. So let me ask you this: So, was there any time anyone told you, and or maybe whispered in your ear, "Yo, don't do that shit"? Oh man, every day. And has that every ever? Day, Kind of make you pause. It has. Okay. It has. Talk about that. I, it, it, and I tell you this. I tell you this. I tell you this. Sometimes the people in your camp mm -hmm. is not for you. So some sometimes somebody's on your team, but they're not really on your team. team. You understand? They, they wear the jersey and they got the same shirt on, but they're not for you. Right. You know, we talking really back the other day. I mean, when I first started, when I first started, when I first started. Coaching, my grandfather said, my grandfather, this is what I'm saying now. My grandfather said, How could he be a coach? He didn't make it as a boxer. He can't be no coach. You understand? And I just used it as fuel. Sure. Because by that time, I understood that, you know what? It's dance is dance, fighters fight, and haters hate. Mm -hmm. people, people who don't accomplish stuff for themselves will always try to have you come down, right? So how are you taking losses now? Because you said oh, yes. you lost you lost, oh, you lost yes. that first match in battle. Lost, oh yes. And then you know and what? It, it stopped you. Yes, guess what? It's a learning. Okay, so now it's how, learning. how are you using that to oh, man. It's, that you different? know you know you have to be passionate about winning. You have to take a loss. There's two things you gotta do for, with it. You gotta take it as a fuel. Mm -hmm. To, to, to train harder, to work harder, but you also got to take it as a lesson to work smarter. So And 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 say, what mistake did I make? Why did I lose? Right. right why right. did I lose? You should got to say, why did I lose? So you got to use that loss as motivation. Motivation. Not as something that's going to stop you. Not as a weight. Because a, a lot of people tend to overthink shit. Yes. And then they get into their own fucking heads. Yes. And then they're like, you know what? Fuck yes. this shit. Mom yes. and dad was right. I shouldn't be fucking doing this. Let me enroll in fucking school and become a fucking get a criminal yeah. justice degree. Yeah. Okay. All minorities get a fucking criminal justice degree. Yeah. And then, and then, do, and then they're working at fucking Best Buy. And then they work at Best Buy. And 20 years go by. 20 years go by. They get to 45. Right. And then they're miserable. Right. You don't know why. You don't know why. But it's because you haven't lived. You have not lived. You've just been waking up. You've just been existing. That's it. You've just been existing. Right. You understand? So I I take I take any loss. You, you know, losses is not just in competition. Losses you can go to work and have a loss. Absolutely. You, can, you can you can lose a you can have, you can be in a relationship. Right. You can be in a relationship and have a loss. Absolutely. Right? So let me ask you something. You don't go to the next relationship with a better understanding. Right. Right? It's like you you're in a relationship now, right? Yeah. I got. I was divorced. I'm you was divorced. divorced. So let me ask you something: Were you not more prepared for the second marriage than you than you were yeah. for the first? I, I'm actually probably a better man to my to my soon to be wife than I was probably to my ex wife. Of course, you know um, it's, 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 it's fucked up, but it's true. It's know, true. It is no, it is. it's life, bro. It's life. Exactly. Let me ask you something: You got to think about it. You got to think about it. Cars mm -hmm. today, how do they stack up against cars? Yesterday, mm -hmm. right? Agriculture today, how to stack up against agriculture yesterday? Right. You understand? We need to take those losses as ingredients to success. Right. That's part of the building blocks to success. Right. 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 If you, if you. Had a, were successful at something, part of it is going to be work ethic. Right. Part of it is going to be skill. Yeah. Part of it is going to be just blessings, pure luck. Right, right. Some people don't believe in luck. Some people say it's not luck, it's a blessing, right? Now, if you were blessed with everything that you did, 
and had no failure, no faults, how do you speak to the other person that may not be as blessed as you in the areas that you were blessed? You don't. So you don't. You don't have a story. You don't have a story. There's no story for you. Right. Losses, we need them. But we got to understand the mindset of, okay, how am I going to learn from it? How am I going to bounce back from it? Right, right. How you bounce how back? How am I going to bounce right. back from it? You understand? And, and, and you got to have faith. Right. You got to have faith. You got to, you got to, faith, faith. They say the faith of a mustard seed can move a mountain. Right? You got to, it's like I'm making a cake. Mm -hmm. It's like you're making a cake. Right? My dad makes something. We call it mix in the island. Okay. Right? It's like a bread. What does he make it with? He, he makes he, he takes flour, he takes water, he takes baking powder, a little bit of sugar, and he makes bread with that. Right? If I give you those stuff on the table, and you don't have the mindset, I'm going to make bread. I don't know what the fuck to do that shit. What the fuck you do with it, bro? Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna, am I wrong or right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. You understand? It's, 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 you gotta, you, life gives you different ingredients. You gotta, you just gotta build on it. Absolutely. And you don't let anybody deter you from something you want. So, how, how, how is Q gonna win in 2018? Oh, man. So, how, how, can I tell you something? How can I tell you win? something? I'm already with you. Okay. I'm already with you. I, I, like I said, I ended 2017. The loss of my grandmother. My grandmother was a very prayerful person. She was a she was a very ambitious person, right? And in her seventies, she went back to school um, to be a to be a a, a preacher or a reverend, right? Wow. Okay. And she graduated valedictorian of her class in her seventies. Wow. In her seventies, right? In, two, in 2018, I'm on a mission to, to for one, be a better person. Got gotcha. you. To be a better person, to 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 be to to take a second to look at my shortcomings. Okay. And when I say shortcomings, it's not something negative. I'm just looking at what I need to improve on. Sure. To to take you that mission. You understand? If we if we as people don't take a second to be like, how can I be better? Right. How are you gonna be better? So, no doubt. Yeah. so so my mindset for two thousand for two thousand eighteen is that self betterment. Sure. That's the first thing. Okay. Right? Second thing, short term goals. Okay. I'm talking about the non for profit. Yeah. Don't look at ten years from now, five years from now, what do I have to do now? to accomplish that. Right. right. Those steps, right? Those write steps. it down. Because people always talk about the goal, which is great. They write down the goals, but yeah. they don't talk How about the steps. There. How we get there. Yeah. How we get there. Exactly. Write them down. Right. When you write them down, as you accomplish it, cross it off. So how how soon you expect to have location? How soon you expect to start having your first couple people or one person in there training? Like, what's your timeline? Before the middle of the year. Okay, I work for a company. I don't want to see the company on the, no, on, on, the on, on the podcast, but I've already sp spoken to the my manager mm -hmm. who has a passion for boxing. Also, ah, the, the, so. the irony of it, and so you kind of have company, a connect then. Yeah, yeah. It's my the company, company, my company, my company. In the very short future, we're working on we're working on sponsoring a amateur show in Georgia. Wow. Right, we're gonna have we're gonna have we're gonna have a uh uh and it's gonna be hopefully from how this one goes up maybe it'll be an annual show where it'll be like the so and so and so invitational. Okay, we're gonna bring fighters, you know, that from all, all over Georgia. We'll probably even invite fighters from you know different yeah. states. But it's and we're and and what we're what we're doing is the profits of it is gonna go to. A charity event that will will help the, the youth. Amazing, right? Amazing. One 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 of the one of the programs that I, I hope to 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 contribute to is 
music programs, music programs in the in the in the middle schools, in the high schools, because Georgia is a Georgia is a, a beautiful state. Sports is huge. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right? it's fucking ridiculous. The football team has <clears throat> yeah. a lot of high tension. school is ridiculous. High school College, football. Yeah, man. But then we have the, at the football games, there's a marching band. Absolutely. There's these kids that don't play football. No. They're playing but they're just as invested. But they're just as invested. Absolutely. But they don't get the same contributions as, say, the football team. Right, right. They don't get the same contributions as, you know, as the teams that everybody fully stands for. But they need our support the same way. Absolutely. And we're going to do it. You know, it, 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 we, I'm interested in, 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 in any program that's going to build in our future. Any program that's going to help our kids, you know, for the next, for the next day. Right. You know, a lot of people don't, don't, know. They, they migrate for different reasons. Sure. They migrate for different reasons. I'm re- migrated for a particular reason. I have three beautiful kids. Yeah. As a young man. Same here. I, I got, no, three kids. And I, I came down here 20, uh, uh, 02, after 9 11. And mm. I, I came down because my kid wanted to have a better life than outside yeah. of the I had to. Yeah, I had to give them that chance, opportunity that I didn't have. But at the same time, it comes to a point that they lose it. They lose a little salt and pepper from it because the streets taught us something. Yes. They didn't. They lived in the cul-de-sac. So they got cul-de-sac yeah. fucking life. Yeah. So I feel like it was it was my job to really instill to them, yo, this is what the streets is like. Yes. You may not be experiencing it the way I'm experiencing, but I'm gonna give you still knowledge based off of that. But you know what? This is, this is what you're doing, and what I'm doing is what America built on. Absolutely. Right? And then, Thanksgiving. We just had Thanksgiving. Yeah. We just had Thanksgiving. Right? What's the meaning of Thanksgiving? People came to America right. to start something. <coughs> right? Right. People came to America to start something and was, and, and if I get the story right, you know, if I don't get this right, correct me, they were fed. Right? They, they killed the fucking Indian. Well, they were fed. They were right? fed, you know, that. This, this is support. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, that's, that's I, the. This, you know, history's <laughs> a funny thing. History's a funny thing. And sometimes. History is not really what happened. It's really how the story gets told. Absolutely. So I'm only going by what the story I'm not in the history you. books what was, right? But our beautiful country is built on people coming here to make a better life, right? We have, right now, there's such a thing where they want to build this wall yeah. for Mexico, which I think is crazy. Which is crazy because these people come here to fulfill a dream, right? And let's talk about that. Let's, let's, if I, if I, I don't want to be off the subject, but what have the Mexicans done? They're hardworking, they're family oriented, yeah. right? Are they not? Yeah, they yeah. are. The Africans. The normal fucking people. The Haitians come here. Yeah. The Haitians come here. Yeah. The Haitians come here and they work, right? Jamaicans, Guyanese. Puerto, well, Puerto Rico is America, right? Yeah. But still, they still come here and they contribute to our culture, to our melting pot, right? Absolutely, right. If we didn't, if we didn't have all these spices from all these other countries, how, how, how what, what would we be like? And that's the thing that we'll be the fucking losing and not winning. We would. And, and this is where, you know, like I said, me and you met because we had the Brooklyn fucking attitude. Yes, yes. And it wasn't it wasn't a good exchange actually. <laughs> it really was. You had me fucking pissed. I wanted to fuck you up. Nah, that wasn't gonna happen though. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 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 don't talk for the iPad. Don't exactly. talk for the don't have, talk I have for the to, phones. I have to talk for the podcast. Don't I'm talk saying, for the Q, podcast. Q, Q is a Q is a, uh, is a bigger man than I am. Um, yeah, he is, and he probably would have kicked my ass anyway. Oh, but, God uh, is great. Uh, but God um, is great. you know, yeah. the the biggest thing was the next day. I, you know, I, mm-hmm. you know, we were like, "Yo, like, yeah. what's going on, man?" It's like, you know, and and you kind of knew, like, we kind of felt we were from, yes, kind of the same spot just because yes. the attitude yes. was very similar, almost, almost the same. Our responses to each other was exact, yes. Um, and then from there, the respect just began and it kind of grew from there. Now, you know, yeah. definitely the friendship. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And uh, it's it's been great because when I started the podcast thing and yeah. I came up to Q, I was, "Yo, you know what? I want to get your story." Yeah, not to cut you off. Yeah. there's nothing bigger than respect. Absolutely, there's nothing. You know, people get mad at me because I tell them, and if you think about it, I, I believe I'm right. Respect has more value than love. Absolutely, respect because you know I could 
we could be in a relationship for 10 years mm -hmm. and we fall out of love. Not, without doing anything, just fall in love. Right, right. But I have to do something for you to, for you to lose respect for me. Exactly. I have to do something for you to play. I don't respect him. Yeah. You understand what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and look at this, right? In a relationship, you have a relationship with a woman and you love her. Yeah. You love her 10 times over and she loves you the same way. One day she wakes up and she's like, Rafi, I don't love you anymore. Yeah. What do you do with your love? Shit, I gotta have to figure out how to make it in my pocket. Yeah, I can my pocket in. You can't do that with it. Yeah. Because if she don't love you back, there's nothing you can do that will make her love you if she just doesn't love you. Right. Right? So, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? You gotta use that energy someplace else. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, that's, and that's where we come from, like regretful energy and things like that. Yes. And how, you know, like I said, it stopped you in kind of your tracks with the, yes. the loss, and then you said, oh, I'm gonna go fuck it, I'm gonna try to do coaching yes. and shit like that. And, but then the, the the daily grind of life yes. takes over. You can't, you can't. And you, and you lose sight you of, of your passion. Yes. And sometimes you forget how you, and to get back into it, it's almost like riding a bike again. Like, yeah, you gotta, yeah. You gotta try, and like, okay, well, hold on, I remember this. And, I like this. I, but then yeah. shit change over years, right? Yeah. There's new techniques, there's new styles, yeah. Yeah. there's different ways there's, of But you know what, boxing is box a, box a thing, boxing is a thing that even if you're in it every day, you gotta study your craft. Absolutely. You gotta study your craft. You, know, you gotta become that subject matter expert. You gotta you become to, that. You have to. Yeah. I learned I learned stuff. I learned stuff every day about boxing. When I say every day, every day, because I watch boxing every day. Right? I've had conversations with people that that uh uh you know what? I have like I'll I would I'll, I'll say his name. I have a lot of conversations with a gentleman, Fort Mayweather's uncle, Jeff Mayweather. And his boxing IQ. Happy New Year, Jeff. It's your brother Crazy. You love you, man. His boxing IQ is so high that I love speaking to him. Right. You know, and we interchange and we talk and think, and we would talk about fights or talk about this, talk about fights that we've watched or talk about fights upcoming, you know. And I, I don't want to um, talk his business, but we talked about the about the, the sugar shame for it, maybe with the fight okay. before it happened. You know, and I, among other people, was like, this is gonna be a very hard fight for Floyd because Sugar Shane was extremely fast, right, extremely experienced, a lot of pep, a lot of power, right? right. He's a, he's a, he's obviously a Hall of Famer. Right. He's obviously a, was a great champion. Right. Right. And I said, this is probably gonna be Floyd's hardest fight. And he said, no. He said, no. And I said, what? How did you say that? And he said, well, for one, Shane don't have a jab. Sugar Shane don't have a jab. So he really started breaking him down when he, he doesn't have. Down. He broke it down. Really, it's obvious what he has. He obviously what he has. So let's, let's figure out what he doesn't have. He doesn't have. Right, right. And, and you know, and and sure enough, you've seen it. He, he had his moments in the fight, early in the fight. But once the adjustments were made, there was nothing he could do. Why? Because he didn't have that jab. He had that poor jab. So he didn't. Right. He, he didn't add any skill set. And, yeah, and, and, he, and, he could have added a jab in training. No, a simple. He could have added something in training. No, you it, was so. it was it done. It was done. And, and, at that stage of his career. Okay, well, that, later, was, later. See, we're not going to. Well, that's that's similar to, to to basketball players where yeah. they come one dimensional. Right? So, like, let's say, like, um, what's his face in Charlotte now? Uh, Give me his name, big center, uh, Dwight Howard. Yeah, Dwight Howard, I think could have been a massive success. He could have been right. He, he has, been. he, he has a talent. He has, a, a, he, has, he has a talent. Yeah, he doesn't have to work ethic. Okay, he never added a jump shot to no, his game. No, he didn't evolve his game. No, because you get old. You know, it's so evolve. funny. We talked. We talked about him. We talked about him a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. Um, a good family friend of mine. Good morning, Tina. Um, she's she's in Georgia. God bless her. Support women's basketball. Yeah. We need to support women's basketball. I want to see a WNBA video game <laughs> soon. I want to see that's it. genius right there. That's I want to see it. Yeah, you understand because you know what they're balling. Yeah, they're balling just like yeah. the men. And if you've seen female athletes, I take take it from me. I'm a coach. I think they work harder than male athletes for the most. They have a lot against them. That's a lot of proof. Yes, they do. 
Yes, they do. She was like, I know it's been, and they got, you got to go. I understand that. And, um, mm. It's been great yeah. sharing your story. I appreciate you sharing your story. But no you taught me a lot. This no story. You know, one thing I want to finish with. Yeah, man. We talked about how you accomplish your dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a little boy, I was in math class and a teacher, Mr. Coldy, taught, was teaching us the law of probability. Okay. If P, then Q. If P is given, then Q. Do you remember that when you were yeah. a kid? That's life, man. I thought I would never use that, but I use it every day. Once you understand what P stands for, yeah. what Q stands for, and what's given, and how you get to it, you get it. That's the formulas, whether it's for boxing, whether it's for job improvement, whether it's for making yourself a better person, working on your relationship. Like, listen, if P is staying out late, Q is you're going to be in trouble. It's simple. <laughs> I Walk love that. P. I fucking love that. All right? Man, That's God great, mate. Yo, that's All what's right. summer. Thanks again, bro. Well, my pleasure. Yo, pleasure. Right, nah. That's All the right, right thing, man. Definitely. I can't wait. We're going to do this again. When you get what? the gym open. Say no more. When we have, the, when we have, when we have the, the, the show, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. But you heard that first. He said he's down with it. Definitely. All right, guys. All right, bro. All right.